I'm going to go over the types of symmetry that um, all organisms possess. You know, um, all organisms possess one type of symmetry only. And here are all the type of, types of symmetry that exist. Uh, throughout throughout the world, throughout all organisms, spherical symmetry, radial symmetry, uh, bilateral symmetry, and asymmetry. All right, so spherical symmetry is kind of the one that's least talked about. Um, this is an organism that is in spherical shape, and it can be cut into identical halves. If those cuts uh, pass through the like the center dot of an organism. So this would be, you know, very small organisms generally. Very, very small organisms, bacteria. So if, if you were if I were to draw a circle, something like this, if this was like a real circle, complete, you know, perfect circle, it would be like passing lines through the center point. And each, each time, it splits the organism into equal mirror images, all right? So each half is identical when cut down the center point. So I'm going to read you my definition, and then I'm going to move on to the next, next kind. An organism possesses spherical symmetry if it can be cut into two identical halves by any cut that runs through the organism's center. All right, the second type of symmetry is radial symmetry. And this type of symmetry is often confused with bilateral symmetry because the definitions are closely related. Um, but radial symmetry is, um, or let me, let me state the definition. An organism possesses radial symmetry if it can be cut into two identical halves by any longitudinal cut through its center. I like to use starfish as a good example um, because they're easy. To, to, to see. So if I had a starfish, let's say like this, like such, such a starfish, okay? It's not perfect, but whatever. If I had a starfish, what, what radial symmetry means is it can be cut um, into two identical halves by a single longitudinal cut through its center. So like that. It passes through the center point, which I'll, I'll identify. It passes through a center point, and this side folds over to equal this side. They are identical halves. If you went like that, this side would fold over. Well, if it was drawn perfectly, this side would fold over to equal that, uh, and so on. So radial symmetry, imagine like a knife going through the top of an organism, and passing through the center point, which is the, by, uh, established by this blue dot here, passing through that point, and it's splitting up the organism into equal parts that look the same, mirror images of each other. Usually um, on a test, if you get this, only members of phylum Cnidaria um, have this type of symmetry, uh, like jellyfish and sea anemone um, and stuff like that. But starfish are a good example of it. Okay, so they go through the top, through a center point, longitudinal cut. Let me repeat the definition. An organism possesses radial symmetry if it can be cut into two identical halves by any longitudinal cut through its center. Okay? Okay. Um, bilateral symmetry. This is the type that humans possess. Humans possess bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry is where an organism be can be cut longitudinally down its center to produce two roughly mirror images of each other. Um, so that would be like a human. If I started at the top of my head, went through my nose, through my mouth, down through my chest, you know, between the legs, I would, I would possess bilateral symmetry, and I do possess that because if I did that, uh, bilateral symmetry would result. Um, the best example is humans, but flatworms provide another good example, um, which are like planarians. They have um, bilateral symmetry. They can be cut down straight through the metal, just one cut, one cut to produce two mirror sides um, of an, one another. So an organism possesses 
bilateral symmetry if it can be only if it can only be cut into two identical halves by a single longitudinal cut along its center, which divides into right and left halves. So organisms have bilateral symmetry when their two halves are approximate mirror images. So it's easy to get this mixed up with radial symmetry, having repeating segments in which a line can be cut to produce mirror images. So radial symmetry uh, can be, you know, like I did the starfish, it was cut into many multiple um, line segments, longitudinal cuts that made equal halves. Bilateral symmetry is only one line. Okay, if you cut a cut a human transverse section, you wouldn't get bilateral symmetry. Only that longitudinal cut would get that. All right, would, would achieve uh, bilateral symmetry. So radial symmetry has many. That's how I like to remember. It has many cuts. You can do it many times and get equal halves. Bilateral symmetry only has one. One cut to equal. Asymmetric or asymmetry is the easiest type of symmetry. Um, an organism possesses or an organism is asymmetric if it possesses no symmetry at all. Sponges, yes, sponges. Sponges are basically just like blobs, like this, okay? And when you try to, you know, do anything to try to get symmetry out of them, this half would not equal this half. If you went down the center, this half wouldn't fold over to mirror that half. So no, sponges are asymmetric. That's the, definitely the easiest type of symmetry. Um, and so, these are the types of symmetry. Just remember, bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry differ in that radial symmetry has many, 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 okay? can be cut infinite amount of times. Um, bilateral symmetry can only be cut once. That's the main difference, all right? So, radial symmetry. Sea anemone, jellyfish, hydra, bilateral symmetry are flatworms. Um, or even roundworms like earthworms um, possess bilateral symmetry. Okay, that puts that's that's my video on. Um